Hello, detectives. Welcome to episode seven of the Deception Detective podcast. Today, we're going to look at a compilation of Jody Hildebrandt, as well as Ruby Frankie, and some uh, uh, videos and clips of Connections, which was Jody Hildebrandt's school for parenting, which uh, Ruby Frankie attended. So, as you know, in episode one of the Deception Detective podcast, we looked at Ruby Frankie. And lots of comments told me I should be looking into Jody Hildebrandt because she apparently had a big influence on Jody, might have brainwashed her, uh, and connections may have been cult like. So, we're going to watch this compilation by Conspiracy. I've already subscribed to her. I suggest you guys uh, go give her a follow. I've linked the original video in the description. And we'll see what we can glean about Jody from this compilation and what her relationship with Ruby was like. Please do me a favor, like and subscribe. To the Empowering Joy class, I'm Jody Hildebrandt. I am sure you're here because you have a desire to heal, a desire to have joy in one thing about, uh, so she said you have a desire to heal, right? So she's targeting this video to susceptible people, right? People who are in need of healing. And that is typical of cults. So I'm not saying that uh, Connections is a cult, but just pay attention to the language there, right? If you have a desire to heal. So people who are already stable and happy with their lives are not the people that Jody is targeting. So pay attention to the language she uses, right? Even though we're not trying to detect deception this time, the language still matters, right? Just the same way we were able to detect detect that Ruby was a sadist by the language she used. Let's see if we can detect um, that that Jody is a manipulator or has a uh, controlling personality. Let's see what we can glean from this in your life and connection in your relationships i have that same desire not only for myself but also for you and so i'm very aware that many people are coming let's back that up because that might have been leakage right she she said that she has a desire to heal herself so that means she has damaged herself that's a strange thing to admit hildebrandt i am sure you're here because you have a desire to heal a desire to have joy in your life and connection in your relationships. I have that same desire, not only for myself, but also for you. Interesting. So she's saying that she doesn't have good relationships and that she needs to heal herself. Um, Right. If she had everything together, we wouldn't expect her to say that she has those same desires for herself. So that looks like a little bit of leakage, right? She might be admitting that she's not so put together as she'd like to portray with this glossy video. And so I'm very aware that many people are coming and they feel like they can't figure out how to have those things, joy, connection, clarity. And the truth is that you can. Those of you who have been given a diagnosis, I want to tell you that your diagnosis is not who you are. It's not you. The truth is, is that you can change. You just need education. You need the correct education. You need to understand about the power of your agency and what your agency slash your choice has the power to do. And that's where the empowering joy class comes in. I know that I am not the only mom who has spent much of her time looking and looking for a program or a class or some kind of curriculum that I could share with my child So this looks like an actual testimonial for connections from Ruby Frankie. And, uh, you know, lots of companies ask for testimonials. That's perfectly normal. But it is also a a brainwashing technique to get people to publicly endorse a belief is a form of brainwashing. And um, I'll put this in my link tree, this book, Influence by Robert Cialdini. But there's a great chapter about how... uh, uh, prisoners of war in Vietnam, I think it was, or China, were American prisoners of war were told simply to write things that they liked about the Chinese government. 
or the Vietnamese government, right? So they didn't even have to believe it, but they just had to write it. And over time, saying that they liked, even if it was the smallest thing, right? Like I like the the rice, it, even if they said a small thing publicly, right? So they had to write it down, they had to show it to people, made them start to believe it. So the fact that Jody is asking uh, Ruby to make a testimonial isn't you know a huge red flag, but it is also uh, could also be interpreted as a form of brainwashing if, she, if she's doing this to make Ruby even more uh, indebted to her. And when I was looking for this compilation, I did see a short, um, I didn't watch it, but uh, maybe I should, where Jody was complaining to people about not leaving Google reviews for connections. Or it was something like she was asking her followers to leave Google reviews for connections. And that's another public endorsement of something, right? So she was asking them to do it, I think, even if they didn't believe everything they were saying, but to publicly endorse connections. And that is a brainwashing technique. So if Jody has studied brainwashing, then she's applying uh, one of the most basic commonly known techniques, which is to make someone publicly say something good about you. Where my child would easily understand and learn about their value and their potential and to inspire them. What I have found is empowering joy, and it is now a family favorite. The tradition is every Saturday we get up and we listen to Empowering Joy as we make breakfast together. It really sets the stage for the rest of the weekend. The changes that have occurred in my home have been calming. Because of Empowering Joy, my entire So notice how Ruby said the changes are calming. That's an interesting word to use. Let's listen to that again. Because normally, right, if you're sending your kids to a school, um, you know, you might talk about how we're, you know, happier, right? Like the class is called joy. But Ruby is referring to calming. And knowing what we know about Ruby, how, you know, she doled out insane punishments to her children. Um, it's interesting that she's highlighting calming. It probably means that, that uh, I think it means that she's doing something to make the children be quiet, right? Family favorite. The tradition is every Saturday we get up and we listen to Empowering Joy as we make breakfast together. It really sets the stage for the rest of the weekend. The changes that have occurred in my home have been calming. Because of Empowering Joy, my entire calming so the the children are quieter more subdued it's it's a uh, something to note right it's a interesting use of words she could have picked out the average person has a 30,000 to 20,000 word vocabulary right the average english speaker and she picked the word calming right not happier or you know the children are uh, more active uh, more responsible smarter but she picked the word calming if we did a deep dive on this, we would definitely dig into that choice of words. Higher family now has a common vocabulary of words that we use with each other that we know exactly what the other person means when they say them. We can communicate. And this is another technique of cults, right? A big feature of cults is isolation. And so you isolate people from their family members but you also isolate them by making them use a different language. So having them do rituals that might force them to be away from other people or use language in a way that other people can't understand them. So for example, Ruby just said that connections is teaching them a new language. And now we're seeing on the screen, some of those words that they're being given different uh, definitions of. And these are words that are, already common in English, already have a set definition. And it's interesting that that these are the words that Jody wants to redefine. And if you're listening on podcast mode, some of these words we have on the screen are happy, peace, joy, calm, honest, humble, lies, chaos. So imagine taking someone and distorting their view of what evil is are distorting their view of what truth is. Um, that is common in cults, right? So I don't know what definition she gave them for these words, but
but the fact that they're learning unique language is a cult like feature. But I guarantee you, you will find principles of joy in this class. At the end of each week, as I prepare for a new Saturday class, I'll take the slides off of the fridge and put them in a book. This provides my family with a book of principles and easy to understand visuals. This is literally the book on raising children that you have been looking for. And it is a great way to learn as a family from mom and dad, the children invite grandparents, your aunts and uncles to join. And then you have curriculum to discuss the rest of the week. I like to print out my slides and put them on the fridge. And then anytime the kids come home from school or come home from a play date or have an interaction that they're uncomfortable with, or maybe they're being disrespectful, I can go back to the visual and Again, interesting use, interesting choice of words, right? If the children are being disrespectful, she can go to these slides from Connections. What does that tell you? That Connections is teaching her how to punish her children, right? She's not saying if the kid has, has a question that I can't answer or, you know, the kid is sad. But the choice of words is the example she picked was the, the kid doing something wrong. And now she has a justification for whatever punishment she's going to dole out. And plug any experience into what we learned in a Saturday class. And the reason you can do that is because these are principles and principles apply across the board in any situation. I invite you to join me every Saturday to learn about principles of truth. The base being honest, responsible, and humble and how you can use your Honest, responsible, and humble. This is something we heard in uh, episode one when we were looking at the compilation of Ruby Frankie videos. And at the time, I thought it was bizarre. And now we see where, where Ruby and her kid got those principles from. So that actually came from Connections and Jody. And in episode one, I actually said that uh, Ruby relished teaching the humble part, right? So her son said, I should be honest, responsible, and humble. And Ruby said, let's focus on humble. And I think, and I postulated, I think she liked the humble tenant the most because humbling someone requires belittling them, humiliating them, right? Punishing them. You can't make someone humble by praising them or treating them well or building them up. So if this looks like a, a little match made in hell, right? So Jody comes up with principles, uh, and one of them is humility. And Ruby, who is a sadist, now has cover to teach her children humility, right? She has cover to punish her children because she's teaching them this extremely important tenet of humility, according to Connections, right? So you have someone who's teaching principles, that require punishment and you have a sadist who enjoys doling out punishment and now she, the sadist has a reason to dole out punishment. So that is interesting. Your choices to empower you to recognize distortion and recognize truth and reframe those distortions, those lies back into what the reality is back into the truth so that your life can become calm your life calm again the choice of words right so it looks like ruby was parroting what jody said here right when ruby said the house has become calm here jody emphasized that if you take this class your house your life will become let's see what she said distortions those lies back into what the reality is back into the truth so that your life can become calm your calm. Um, so not, you know, this is all I know about Jody, right? There wasn't much out there. This is a very good compilation so far compared to the other ones I looked at. And it looks like Jody has picked the word calm and it looks like she's targeting parents who have unruly children and she's teaching them how to punish them into submission, right? She's not emphasizing how 
the children become empowered, right? She's saying you, the mother or father, get empowered from this class. And she's saying your house will become calm. Not that your house will become happy or, uh, you know, your children will excel. There's actually very little focus on the children. This is all about calming down your house. And I think that's why Ruby might have been attracted to this, because this gives you cover to dole out severe punishments, right? If the children are acting up, running around, acting like kids, you can calm them. Your life will become clear and you will be able to have connection and peace. I'll see you on Saturday. Other ways to grab your children's attention. It may take more effort and it probably will take more effort on your part rather than hitting them because when you hit them, you immediately, usually, you immediately have their attention. Most kids will be like, oh, and then they'll be like, what do you want? What do you want? I'll do whatever you want. Just don't hit me again. But then you have. Think about how hard do you have to hit a kid to make them say, I'll do whatever you want. This dynamic set up of I'm afraid of you and I obey you because I'm afraid of you, not because I love you or I respect you or I want to obey you. I do those things. So there's lots of leakage in this, right? So here Jody is doing, it looks like a, a TikTok or something about hitting your children creates fear. That's what's titled. But listen to how she's describing it and the things she's casually saying, like you hit your kid and they say, okay, I'll do whatever you want, or it creates fear. She's leaking, I think, a personal history of abuse. So let's, let's start this over and listen to how she's not talking about a spanking or a slap on the wrist. If you actually listen to the words she's saying. And the fact that she's talking about this so casually uh, is, is alarming. So let's, let's start this over. Other ways to grab your children's attention. It may take more effort and it probably will take more effort on your part rather than hitting them. Because when you hit them, you immediately, usually, you immediately have their attention. Most kids will be like, oh, and then they'll be like, what do you want? What do you want? I'll do whatever you want. Just don't hit me again. I'll do whatever you want. Just don't hit me again. Those are the words of someone who's been hit very hard and multiple times it sounds like right don't hit me again but then you have this dynamic set up of i'm afraid of you and i obey you because i'm afraid of you not because i love imagine how severely you have to punish your kid for them to say i'm afraid of you All right so notice the pronouns she's using right she's speaking as the child here i'm afraid of you Right. She's probably heard a kid say that before. I love you or I respect you or I want to obey you. I do those things out of compliance now. And some kids won't even do it out of compliance. They'll just get hit and then they'll just look at you like, so. Now what that is actually the reaction of a child who's been severely abused. For example, if uh, a parent takes their kid to the doctors and the doctor, you know, uh, does something that hurts them, right? And as part of a procedure, right? like maybe touches a bruise and the child doesn't react, that's a red flag for domestic um, situations at home. So they, they will actually call CPS um, or report it to the police, right? So that is one of the red flags of abuse when a kid does not, when they stop reacting to getting hit. So the fact that she's talking about something like this, like she has firsthand knowledge of it is extremely concerning. And she, I think the way she's speaking is she's leaking that she has done her, this herself. She has firsthand knowledge. I do those things out of compliance now. And some kids won't even do it out of compliance. They'll just get hit and then they'll just look at you like, so? Now what are you going to do? Hit them harder? You know, like pummel them? Now you've lost your intervention. And more and more kids are going towards that where they just don't appear to be faced. 
who are responsible to protect you. And now. So she's saying more and more kids are going through that where they don't appear to be phased by getting hit. So that probably means that lots of Jody's clients have kids who are severely abused at home. So the more I see of Jody, the less surprised I am that Ruby was attracted to her because Ruby has all the hallmarks of a sadist, right? As we reviewed in episode one, she relishes punishing her children and she sets them up for failure, right? So she puts them in situations where they can't help but screw up. And then even when she's recounting it in interviews, she slows down the story and adds a lot of detail when she's discovering the problem, like the spilled pineapple juice in, in episode one of the podcast that we looked at, right? So she said they were sleeping on the couch and then I felt something sticky, right? So she goes a long time about how she discovered the situation that would allow her to punish the children. And then she relished interviewing the children and investigating it. And I'm sure, right, the big money shot for her, the big payoff was actually doling out the punishment and recording it and putting it online, right? So one of the hallmarks of a sadist is they love public humiliation. So Ruby is a sadist. I stand by that analysis. And I'm not surprised that she was attracted to someone like Jody, who doesn't seem phased by severe uh, punishment of children and actually has a bunch of principles that give cover for the abuse of children, like humility, right? The only way to teach a kid humility is to belittle them or punish them or do things that, that are not uh, pleasant, right? Kids are carefree, naturally. They're not humble, right? Kids, kids are egocentric, right? As they grow up and mature, that's when they start maybe developing some humility and caring about other people. But as a kid, children are very egocentric. So you're almost setting them up for failure when you want them to be humble. It gives you cover to punish them. Now you're responsible to protect a baby. So I know that many of us, if not all of us, have been conditioned to um, believe that, you know, if someone is being abusive, then you need to get away from that person who's being abused. So this says something about Jody's clientele. Let's rewind. All right. So the title of this TikTok or short that she's doing is protecting your child from abusive partner. And listen to who she addresses and now you're responsible to protect a baby. So I know that many of us, if not all of us have been conditioned. So many of us, if not all of us. So she's addressing women who have been in an abusive relationship. And that's kind of like at the beginning where she said, you need to be healed, right? So she's targeting susceptible people, people who have been hurt or traumatized and are susceptible to someone bringing them in and manipulating them, right? If you're traumatized, it's much easier for someone like Jody, who has authority to bring you in and condition you, right? Essentially brainwash you. Although I don't think that's what happened with Ruby. As I said, I think she is, is a sadist and always been a, a sadist. But the other people Jody's targeting sound like people who are victims and she's able to manipulate them into coming into connections. Conditioned to um, believe that, you know, if someone is being abusive, then you need to get away from that person who's being abusive. But it's okay to leave the kids in that environment. And I understand that many of the law- Right, so she's saying many of the people she's talking to have been in a situation where there's an abusive partner. That's unusual, right? Like, for example, when I talk to camera, I'm not assuming most of you have been in a relationship with an abusive partner, right? It's just not the general population. It's not my target audience. But for her, my point is it seems to be her target audience. And that's how cults operate, right? If you look at anyone who's left a cult, they talk about how they were in, they were young in a time of their life where they were easily manipulated and that's how they got sucked into the cult. The laws in the world support that a man or a woman can be being abusive and they still will have their children given to them, which is horrible. And I understand why the law does that, 
because there's so much deception going on that the law, quote unquote, they don't know where the truth is. They don't know who's telling the truth. So this little boy that you have depends on you, mom. And I'm hoping that you will be a lioness to protect him. So what I'm saying is I want to choose and I want to engage in behavior. And so what I'm saying is I want to choose talking to the masses, but just know such as putting something into your body. It is your responsibility to assess all of that for is this truthful? Is this honest? Is this responsible? It's probably going to be your biggest one. Is this responsible? Who's an adult and the, the adult body? I was talking to a mom the other day. I'm just skipping through these to find one that I watched earlier. So this is a TikTok she made and she's responding to someone who said, my adult daughter won't spend time with me. Right. So this looks like a complaint that a connection student had, right? So a mother told Jody, my daughter, my adult daughter won't spend time with me. And let's see how Jody responds and see if you can pick up how uh, cult like the response is. Appropriate for my body. I was talking to a mom the other day and um, she, she has a, a daughter who's an adult and that the adult daughter has decided to not spend a lot of time with her parents. And um, the mom said to her, well, if you'll. So if we, if we read between the lines here, it looks like that uh, this mother, right, has joined the connections classroom and her daughter doesn't agree with the principals, an adult daughter. And so she's telling the mom, I'm not going to spend time with you while you're participating in connections. And um, based on some of the research I did, right, didn't um, one of Ruby's daughters actually did this, I think, right? Sherry Frankie. She was the oldest daughter. As soon as she was able to leave the house, she got away from Ruby. So I'm not saying that this is necessarily Ruby is asking for this advice. But it seems like that situation where a mother has joined connections, her adult daughter doesn't agree with it, and uh, she's not going to talk to, to the mom unless the mom hears reason. And I think that's why this complaint has come to Jody's desk, right? Because she's telling Jody, like, look, my daughter's not talking to me ever since I started learning your principles. If you'll spend time with me, then I'll just listen to everything you have to say. I just want you around me. And I said to the mom, like, whoa, mom, no, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's not the motive here. Your motive in truth. So notice the isolation. So uh, when the mom told Jody, hey, my daughter will spend time with me as long as I just listen to what she says, Jody says no. Right. She doesn't want any of the participants and connections to hear outside opinions. And that is a huge tenant of cults and of brainwashing is isolation. So in the law, brainwashing is not a defense. Right. So even if Ruby says in court, Jody brainwashed me, that's not really going to be a defense. It, but it does come up in court sometimes in custody battles where right, a dad wants to get custody of the kids and he says, the mom brainwashed the kids against me. And a big factor when you're talking about brainwashing in the legal sense is isolation. And that's why I found this short when I saw it earlier to be so interesting that she's not, as soon as the mom says, okay, all I have to do is just listen to what my daughter says uh, to have her around me, Jody says no. And that is um, encouraging severe, extreme isolation, right? Imagine not even, imagine telling your student not even to listen to their own daughter. And I said to the mom, like, whoa, mom, no, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's not the motive here. Your motive in truth, if you want to live in truth, yes, 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 I want to live in truth. Then you just don't agree with everything that your grown daughter has to say. You assess it for truth. And you let her know 
that, wow, when you say this, 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 um, I'm going to have to agree to disagree with you. She's like, yeah, but if I say that, then she might leave again. And I said, yeah, she might. Right. And that's Jody's intent. She wants the adult daughter who's a problem to leave again. So that's a clear example of Jody isolating one of her students. If we've read between the lines correctly and understood the situation, right? It sounds like this is a connection student. And your job is not to sit here and control whether she stays or whether she doesn't stay. Your job is to stay reflectant of truth. So the invitation. Also notice how when it's an adult daughter, Jody, who doesn't agree, Jody wants her away. But when it's a minor, she's saying you need to be a lioness and lead your children and guard your children and get control of your children, right, from, from the other parent. And that's also concerning, right? That means that um, they understand it's easier to abuse and manipulate and, you know, uh, control minors, children. And once they're too old for that, you want them as far away as possible because they might uh, bring, you know, kick you back into reality and show you and tell you how wrong what you're doing is. is uh, and the hope is that all of the moms that come here learn how and practice plugging in principles of truth into these different circumstances. Or principles of truth are about learning how to be honest, learning how to be responsible, responsible for what? Your own perceptions, your own feelings, your own actions. So perception comes first, then you have an emotional response to a perception, like you're creating that. And then you take your perception and your emotion and you then go act with it. And so as we're getting comments back, people are perceiving not a truth. You're not hearing what we're saying to you. We're inviting you to be responsible for what you're perceiving. And we're asking you to be responsible for what you're feeling and we're asking you to be responsible for this looks like a video made for connections uh and it looks like they're talking about comments on their facebook page or you know their their lessons and when people are putting negative comments in they're telling the commenter that you're not responsible over your emotions because you're acting like this you're acting out which is a form of mockery. And if, if you've seen my old videos, you know that mockery is a great tell for someone who's trying to hide the truth from you, from someone who's trying to deceive you, right? So if these comments were clearly wrong, they could just say, you're wrong, here's why. But this is a very nuanced form of mockery where they're telling people who leave negative comments against them that they're somehow not in control of their own perceptions and actions and that they're hysterical. And uh, you know that whenever I see mockery, right, for members I actually have a little emoji, mockery. And I like to put it whenever I see mockery in the comments to call it out. Because lots of times it's hard to recognize mockery. You can confuse it with the real point. Uh, but here it's very clear that they're trying to make their mockery sound scientific, right? They're trying to make these people who might be realizing the truth about how um, negative connections is, make them feel bad about commenting on it. For your action, which is your typing, I'm, ty I'm gonna react to this person. Like when you're responsible for all of that, then you are living in truth. And here's how we will know if a comment is coming towards us in truth. There will be curiosity in your question, in, in like in your statements. You will say, help me understand you will say, um, I used to do this and now I can see truth. Anyone who is actually practicing living principles of truth. So they're dictating the types of comments they want on their connections, uh, classes or Facebook page or social media. And notice how the, the question she wants, uh, first of all, she only wants comments that are questions because those people are open to her persuasion, right? She doesn't want critiques. 
does not attack, does not get defensive, does not blame, does not say, well, sin is sin, it's okay. They, they don't do those things. And so if you hear in your mind that you're getting reactionary and you want to come at one of us or at someone else who has made a comment in the Facebook page and you feel like that's wrong and you're upset and you want to tell them how wrong they are, you are in classic distortion. All right, so more brainwashing, using language with it, their own private definitions, right? You are in classic distortion. I'm sure they have some definition of what distortion means to them. And on the screen, I'm seeing that they have their own little definitions here in two columns. I'm not going to read it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down. All right, so that's the end of that compilation. I think that actually showed us uh, a great insight into the relationship between Ruby and Jody. I don't think this exonerates Jody at all, but I think it explains why uh, it doesn't exonerate Ruby, sorry, at all. But I think it shows why Ruby was attracted to Jody. That Jody had a a um, bunch of principles that allowed for severe punishment and didn't discourage severe punishment of children. And also, right, uh, endorsed isolating the children and uh, putting them in a position where they couldn't tell their friends about what was going on, our authorities. And then Ruby, who was a sadist, was attracted to that because it gave her uh, cover to dole out these sadistic punishments to her children. Um, I think that's why this is so fascinating. There's plenty of abusive... Uh, parents out there, but they don't all find the uh, a whole other person who actually gives them cover to to act out their most vile fantasies. And in Jody, it looks like Ruby found that. So I know lots of you guys want me to stay on this story. So if you have more videos you want me to analyze, uh, please go to my Twitter, my ex decept at deception debt d e t. And in my pinned tweet there, you can post links to videos and uh, I will check them out. And as we get developments on this story, I'll stay on top of it. Same goes for Russell Brand. I'll stay on top of that. But you know how I feel about his denial. I think it was very unsatisfactory, which is concerning, right? So no one's, even Ruby is not, uh, everyone is innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. But like I always say on my videos, if I'm betting I'm 90% betting that Ruby is a sadist and uh, she enjoyed punishing her children. And I think we're going to learn much more about that. And uh, until next time, stay true.